to me it was a very smooth transition i came in only for post graduation masters ms and phd but i had a lot of interaction with the undergrad students thanks to music <laughs> uh the earliest experiences i remember in fact i became known to a lot of students only because of the music part i remember being told this uh, those days something as uh, today insignificant an inter hostel entertainment competition would have an oat full and it would go on for three days and they said even carrying a veena to the oat stage would have been booed but you managed <laughs> the other way <laughs> so because film songs were also played <laughs> so that the audience would be entertained but that was my earliest interaction with the undergrad students when i was uh, in the postgraduate hostel and then from masters to phd and suddenly even before i finished my phd i had become faculty member and uh, in fact i still remember when i first went to the class the students asked me are you the regular faculty member or uh, are you substituting for somebody or have you come as a ta <laughs> okay i said no no <laughs> i have joined and uh, i couldn't make any difference with the students till yesterday i was let's say on shoulder tapping terms with them and suddenly today to expect them to call me sir seemed embarrassing yes, they did but right from the beginning being friendly with the students came naturally to me because uh, yeah and uh, so that helped me establish a rapport with the students throughout and that also helped me understand some of the personal psychological problems of some of the students i have counseled some of them all of them of course strictly under wraps but i think i have been of some use to the campus community on that front also and after about 20 years or so i think gradually the academics did get more pressurizing i mean there was lot more expected out of faculty members i think i had less time for students but by then i was also a, a generation or two older so i don't think students would have wanted too much of me after that <laughs> so it all worked out well that's the way it went and uh, as faculty again there was quite a bit of adventure <laughs> first we were in the department of humanities and social sciences so huge what should i say kichdi department of all disciplines which did not fit into any branch of engineering <laughs> okay <laughs> so management is not strictly humanities but they were all put at one place and then uh, it was as late as 2000 that the idea of starting an mba came up i happened to be the head of the department at that time so it was a lot of hard work planning we had few of the faculty in fact mrs tenmudi was already there by then so we worked together to come up with a curriculum to pass it through the senate and all of that and uh, the first batch i think passed out of the department of humanities and social sciences only because 2001 was when the first batch joined 2004 or 2005 was when the department was granted and then it a year later it moved to the dorms building which, which was earlier the library building and uh, yeah when we started the mba we also didn't know what we were getting into <laughs> right but it, it worked out well and looking back i'm happy that it's come out well and it's grown from strength to strength <music> 50 years ago many of the politicians did not know the difference between iit and iti 
there were so many occasions when ministers of the central government have come to meetings and in the speech refer to ITI at an IIT function. <laughs> But yeah, when we had the disadvantage of not being known, we had the advantage of not being accountable. Nobody asked us any questions. We had absolute freedom. And it was only our responsibility to use it well. The moment IIT became a global brand and everybody came to know about IIT, there are a lot more demands. One of those demands is, why don't you accommodate more students? So more hostels, more labs, more houses. Of course, I have no idea of uh, the temperament of the new generations of students since I don't have any interaction with them. I guess some features will be common and some would have changed. For example, the gadget use, the addiction to the phone, something which was not there at all. <laughs> so I've been through the generation of cyclostyle question papers, <laughs> cyclostyle notes, and then to photocopies, and then now to virtual copy and soft copy water. A lot of changes, uh, yeah, something important. Uh, the way of disseminating knowledge, that I think requires serious thinking. One is, all of us know for sure, that what we teach in class today is not necessarily what they are going to use at work. Either it's irrelevant or outdated. What we build is a set of analytical skills will help them survive. And the also the ability to learn independently, right? In fact, I remember some of the courses that I taught, I had not learned as a student. So I learned <laughs> and taught, okay. So now with so much of technology support coming in, the big question is, what is the role of classroom instruction? There are a few courses in which the chalk and talk method still works best. But there are many others where videos and films and assignments can be a lot more helpful. And there are subjects where I think a lot of it can be learned independently and the classroom interaction need to be just for an hour a week to just discuss, clarify doubts and so on. Unfortunately, we don't have a mature student body to but it is sink in with that kind of a setup. Otherwise, the entire educational pattern can be much more forward looking. I think the problem is that we still have students trained in the same old way in schools. So suddenly you can't change them now. So they're still accustomed to that. So there is, a, you don't see too many who come forth to learn spontaneously. Of course, part of the other problem is not everybody is here because he or she wanted to be here. There is a social pressure which pushes people into IIT simply because they are academically good. I wish we had a different kind of society where everyone could pursue what he or she is most interested in and make a living out of it. Unfortunately, I think there we have not yet reached. So we still make compromises end up doing programs, courses that we are not really interested in. Study for study's sake, work for work's sake. <laughs> so goes life. Okay. 
My father asked me when I had finished school, and what would you like to, where would you like to go, what would you want to learn? I said music or Tamil literature, and he said neither of them will work. <laughs> Then I of course ended up a mechanical engineering undergraduate at the campus opposite Gindi Engineering College. Which was then still part of Madras University, and then I came for masters to IIT. So 71 to 74, MS, a student of Kaveri Hostel. Then I stayed on for PhD, and before I could finish my PhD, I become a faculty member. So PhD went part time, dragged on. <laughs> All this part of the adventure at IIT. In fact, my generation, there were quite a few colleagues who had. Become faculty with a master's degree and did PhD on the job, and took ten long years to finish. <laughs> Overall, if you ask me, I'd say my view is positive. I am not one to moan and groan. So, oh, this is good point. That is point. No. Changes are inevitable. It will keep happening, and I think a lot of good things have happened. So, if you, in summary, if you ask me, I'll say I'm positive. Initial forays, as I said, were in student competitions, and then there was a music club on campus in which I came in as a volunteer, student volunteer. I stayed there long enough. There is no job that I have not done for music clubs, from starting from distributing circulars to. Let's say spreading the carpet on the floor for the music program. <laughs> Everything I have done. I stayed on long enough to become the president of the music club, a post which I held for 25 years. And uh, the cultural composition of the students also had changed a lot. So there was a time when uh, we could fill half the CLT or even more. There was a time when I have at least one concert I remember of New Srinivas Mandalin. And other than where the artists sat in the CLT, every inch of space was occupied. <laughs> That was the kind of crowd we got at CLT. And in later years, I found, as I said, as the composition of the uh, students changed, uh, the turn up also started falling. It was kind of indifferent, but we still managed to keep it going, and I'm happy that. It's still alive and kicking, but if there are cultural changes that have happened, which we have to reckon with. The other point is, 50 years ago, the preparation time for JEE was probably a few months, maybe a year. So students still had time for extracurricular activities. So if they were learning music. Apart from preparing for IIT, that continued. Whereas today, you have to give up in eighth standard or ninth standard, and then for four years you are cut off. So <laughs> those were probably also healthy add-ons, which kept the students more balanced. I can't say the same of the gadgets that are in use now, the phone or the internet or the. Social media and all of that. I don't know if they relieve stress or add stress. <laughs> Not sure. Depending on how they use it. I think that was one place where, at that time, was a lot more of participative entertainment. now nobody cares entertainment may not even attract people because what you want to hear or listen or watch you can do it on the machine everything is there on youtube or instagram or wherever you want so there isn't that much of a motivation to step out and go to an auditorium and attend a program so but It was an interesting combination of, let's say, I was managing the music club on one side and the academics on the other side. Of course, I had a lot of student participation. I had student volunteers helping me out with the organizing part of the music club. 
So, I must acknowledge that their help was also crucial in me being able to manage both. Thank you.